Hi, welcome to Cheers Church, where the discussion is the message. And today we're going to be talking about the environment of the heart soil part four. My name is Lee West, pastor of Cheers Church. So glad you're with us today. So what is this heart's soil that we are uh, going to be talking about. What well, comes from Luke chapter 8 in the parable of the sower or the parable of the soils, where the seed of the word of God's being planted into four different soils, but only one of those soils actually produces uh, a harvest and fruit. So there's not a problem with the seed, but there is uh, apparently a problem with the soil. And it's described in Luke chapter 8 as the soil is our heart and the seed that's being planted is the word of God. So there's nothing wrong with the seed that's being planted, but sometimes it could be some toxicity or corruption in our own heart that is hindering the, the seed or the word of God from actually bearing fruit like it should be. So let's dive in here and take a look at a few scriptures. Uh, first of all, it's important to know that with the parable of the sower, Jesus actually tells us that if we don't understand this parable, we're not going to understand any of the parables, which were actually about the kingdom of God. So what is he saying? If you don't understand the parable of the sower, you're not going to understand the kingdom of God and how the kingdom of God works. So here's that passage of scripture. It's in Mark uh, chapter four, verse 13. And it says, uh, and he said to them, do you not understand this parable? Talking about the parable of the sower. How then will you understand all of the parables. So today on, on part four, we're going to be talking about the third soil, which ends up being about the seed fell among the thorns and the thorns choked it out. So uh, let's take a look at that. It's in Luke chapter eight, and we're going to look at verse seven and verse 14. Seven's the actual parable and verse 14 is the actual uh, explanation of that. So let's look at this. Luke chapter eight, verse seven says, and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Then in verse 14, it's the explanation from Jesus it says, now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. So when I looked at that word choked, it literally meant to suffocate, to strangle, to crowd out. So what is it saying? The word is being suffocated. It's being strangled out. Um, it's, it's crowded out of our heart um, because our heart's full of cares, distracted maybe by trying to get rich or the riches of this world and the desire for life's pleasures. And you know, there are five top worries in the world, our relationships, health, career, parenting, and finances. Uh, you know, here's an example, right? We get a seed from the word of God planted in our hearts. It's Psalms 91, 16. It says, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And so here's a seed that we can receive into our heart from the word of God. And it says, with long life, I will satisfy him. To me, that's a promise from the Lord to give us long life. But a worry can come in and choke that word out. And that worry could be, I got sick or I'm getting sick at a young age and I'm worried that I will die before I get to the old age. And so this worry can then choke out the seed from Psalms 91, 16. There are plenty of scriptures that we can receive into our heart as truth, but then a trial or a temptation or again, a worry can come in. And the Bible says that that worry can actually, or the cares of the world can actually strangle out that seed or choke the life out of that seed and it will bear no fruit uh, to maturity. So we have to kind of watch that. So the word worry here is mental distress, anxiety, or agitation resulting from concern for something anticipated. It's an expectation of something bad happening. So here's just a brief, hopefully this will make it uh, sum it right up. So worry is thoughts and emotions of a negative future. 
Worry is thoughts and emotions of a negative future. We don't want to think about a negative future, but that's what worry makes us do. And here are some synonyms for worry. Anxiety, annoying, harass, pester. That's what worry does to us. It annoys us. It pesters us to believe that something negative is going to happen or something bad is on its way to us. Now, things that worry causes. Proverbs 12, 25. Um, I actually have this scripture. I want to bring this up as well on the screen. Um, it says, anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. How many of you have ever thought, where does depression come from? Well, here the Bible actually explains it. It says, anxiety in the heart causes depression and anxiety comes from worrying. So when you're worrying about something that will create anxiety, anxiety, if left unchecked, will cause depression, according to the word. Now, let me read you this one, um, because at the end of Proverbs 12, 25, it says, but a good word makes it glad. So anxiety in the heart of, of, of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. So let me give you a couple good words here. Philippians chapter four, uh, verses six and seven says, uh, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And now let me give you another good word here. In Matthew chapter 6, verses uh, 25 and 26, it says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? You are more valuable than the birds, and God feeds them and takes care of them, and he's going to take care of you. We can't worry and add anything good to our life. It literally will choke out uh, the word of God from us. So, are there, are there seeds of the word of God that you have planted in your heart that have not come forth yet into fruit or into maturity? Think about that. Could it be that it's because we have so many cares weighing us down, that we have so much worry about things, that it's choking out the life of that seed and it's not producing any fruit or maturity in our life. And we're wondering, why is the word not working for me? Could it be that we're worrying too much that it's not going to work instead of just believing that it is working or has worked in us? So let me give you a few discussion questions today uh, for our group discussion. There's quite a few here, but I wanted to actually, you know, really stir um, some thought here. So in your discussion today, number one, what do you worry about? Discuss your biggest worry. And and if you're, if that's a problem (laughs) to, to, to bring up your, cause it's too vulnerable to bring up your biggest worry, then just bring in one of your worries, uh, that you were struggling with. And maybe we each can help one another, uh, get through this. Uh, number two, has God ever failed you? Uh, question number three, the mess that you may be in, if you're in a mess, is it God's fault? Did God put you in the mess? Question number four, Can you share a story of your life where God brought you through a tough time? I think we've all had tough times, and I think we've all seen God do something for us in those times. Question number five, in all the years with God, has he ever given you a reason to worry? Question number six, have there been scary times in your life? How did worry help you get through it? Probably not, but (laughs) I needed to put that in there. Question number seven, as Christians who follow God, why do we worry? Question number eight, how do you practically stop worrying? And question number nine, what would your life look like if you didn't worry about it? 
man, I know my life would be very different if I didn't allow worry to come in. So those are our discussion questions uh, for today. So God bless you, and I hope that you'll join us in the discussion, and we'll see you then. Well, we hope you've enjoyed that introduction to our discussion today. One of the cool things about Cheers is that we actually have a discussion around the topic. And now I want to invite you to come into our discussion together and participate with us. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can go to cheerschurch.alterlive.com. We'll put the link in the description. If you're already on Alter Live with us watching, then you can just log in to be able to participate. You can turn your camera on or or off, your microphone on or off. You can participate as much or as little as you want to. We just want you to enjoy the time together and fellowship together. And we just hope you're blessed uh, by joining us today. So consider joining our discussion and uh, we'll see you there.